Section 5.5 covers the famous Fibonacci sequence and the famous golden ratio. And here we have three objectives. Number one is to apply the properties of the Fibonacci sequence uh, that occurs very often in nature and other calculations. And then number two, calculate the approximations of the golden ratio. And then last, discover the relationships between the Fibonacci sequence and the golden ratio. So the Fibonacci sequence is one of the most famous problems in elementary mathematics. It comes from a book, Liber Abaci, written in 1202, so it's about 800 years ago, by Leonardo of Pisa, also known as Fibonacci. And the problem is as follows. A man put a pair of rabbits in a cage. During the first month, the rabbits produced no offspring, but each month thereafter produced one new pair of rabbits. If each pair, new pair, thus produces reproduction or reproduces in the same manner, how many pairs of rabbits will there be at the end of the year? In one year. Well, the solution uh, of this problem you know, leads to a sequence of numbers known as the Fibonacci sequence. And uh, so the first 15 t terms of the Fibonacci sequence is 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, etc., up to 610. Now, if here's how this sequence comes about. If f sub 1 or f sub n represents a Fibonacci number in the nth position in the sequence, then f sub 1 would be 1, and f sub 2 would be 1. And f sub n, the nth one, would be f sub n minus 2 plus f sub n minus 1 for n greater than or equal to 3. And so the expression, this expression for f sub n, is known as a recursion formula. It's called a recursion formula because you can compute any term you want from, the, uh, from this formula if you know the previous two terms. So basically, when you look at it, you add the previous two terms. 1 plus 1 is 2. 1 plus 2 is 3. 2 plus 3 is 5. 3 plus 5 is 8. 8 plus 13 is 21, etc. So you always add the previous terms, two terms, to get the next one. And that is generalized in this recursion formula. Let's look at some exercises with Fibonacci numbers. Um, here's a statement, uh, every natural number can be expressed as a sum of Fibonacci numbers where no numbers used more than once. For example, 25 is equal to 21 plus 3 plus 1, or Fibonacci numbers. So the first exercise says um, express each of the following, num following in this way, so 39, and 39 we can represent as 34 plus 5. And again, these are not unique. Uh, we can express them in different ways as well. And 59, we can represent as uh, 55 plus 3 plus 1. So 55 plus 3 plus 1. And 99, we can express as 89, which is a Fibonacci number, plus 8 plus 2. Again, these representations are not unique. Then number 22, for any prime number p except 2 or 5, either f sub p plus 1 or f sub p minus 1 is divisible by p. Short that this is true for the following values of p. p equals 3, 7, and p equals 11. So for the A part, so we are looking at F sub 3 plus 1, since P is equal to 3, so F sub 3 plus 1 is equal to F sub 4, and the fourth Fibonacci number is equal to 3, which is divisible by P equal to 3. So that's for the A part. So P is equal to 3, so f sub 3 plus 1 is f, f sub 4, which is equal to 3, and 3 is divisible by p, 
you know, three is divisible by three for sure. Then for the B part, uh, for P equals seven, um, so F sub, so this is B. So P equals seven, then F sub P plus one would be F sub seven plus one is equal to F sub eight. And the eighth Fibonacci number is equal to 21. And 21 is obviously divisible by P equals seven. And then for the C part, F sub 11, here we're going to use the uh, minus P sub, uh, F sub P minus one, F sub 11 minus one would be equal to F sub 10. And the tenth Fibonacci number is equal to 55. And that is obviously divisible by P equals 11. So that's what number 22 was all about. It has been shown that if the greatest common factor of m and n, m and n is r, then the greatest common factor of f, f sub m and f sub n is f sub r. Show that this is true for the following values of m and n. m equals 10, n equals 4. So the greatest common factor of m of 10 and 4 is 2, and so, um, F sub M or F sub 10 is equal to 55 and F sub 4 is equal to 3 and so R equals 2 so F sub 2 equals 1 which is the greatest common factor of 55 and 3. So the GCF of 55 and 3, GCF of 55 and 3 is 1. So we look at M and N, 10 and 4, the GCF is 2. F sub m would be F sub 10, the 10th Fibonacci number is 55. F sub 4, the 4th Fibonacci number is 3. And then the uh, uh, r value of r would be 2, the greatest common factor. And F sub 2 is equal to 1. And sure enough, the GCF of 55 and 3 is 1. So that was for A. Then for the B part, when you look at the, uh, at the numbers m equals 12 and 6, the uh, GCF, the greatest common factor, is 6. So then F sub 12, the 12th Fibonacci number, m equals 12, Is equal to 144, and F sub 6, the 6 Fibonacci number, is equal to 8, and F sub, and, <coughs> excuse me, so in this case, F sub R is equal to F sub 6 also, the greatest common factor, Fibonacci number, and that of course is 8, and 8 is indeed the greatest common factor of 8 and 144. So that proves it for the B part. And let's look at the C part. In the C part, Uh, 
m is equal to 14 and n is equal to 6. And so the grade is for c, 14 and 6. So the grade is common factor for 14 and 6 is equal to 2. Now f sub 14 is f sub m, the 14's Fibonacci number, that is equal to 377. And f sub for n 6 would be f sub 6. And we had that a moment ago, the 6 Fibonacci number is equal to 8. And f sub 2, since the greatest common factor is equal to 2, so f sub 2 is equal to 1, which is the greatest common factor of 8 and 377. So we proved it for, yeah, for 14 and 6, and then the corresponding uh, f sub 2 is the greatest common factor of 2 is equal to 1, 1 being the greatest common factor of 8 and 377. So the next few exercises show the connection between the Pythagorean theorem and the uh, uh, Fibonacci numbers. And uh, in the Pythagorean theorem from geometry, we remember that the right triangle has legs of length a and b and a hypotenuse of length c then a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So now here's a connection to the Fibonacci sequence. Suppose we choose any four successive terms of the Fibonacci sequence. So here are the steps. Multiply the first and the fourth term, double the product of the second and the third, add the squares of the second and the third. The three results obtained form a Pythagorean triple, in other words, three numbers that satisfy the equation a squared plus b squared plus c squared. So here we are to find the Pythagorean triple obtained this way using the four given successive terms of the Fibonacci sequence. So when we look at number 33, so the first step is, uh, the a step is to multiply the first uh, times the uh, uh, the first times the fourth, so 1 times 3 is 3, 1 times 3 equals 3, and the second step is we form the product of the second and the third and then double that, so the second times the third would be 1 times 2, and we multiply that by 2 since we're supposed to double that, and that's equal to 4, and then the, the third step is uh, add the squares of the second and the third. So the second term is 1, 1 squared, and the third is 2, so 2 squared, and 1 squared plus 2 squared is 5. So here we add the squares of the second and the third term, so that's equal to 5. And this is indeed a Pythagorean triple because uh, 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared because 9 plus 16 equals 25. Okay, let's do this for number 34. So again, we multiply the first times the fourth term so, for 34 now, first times the fourth, 2 times 8 is 2 times 8 equals 16. Then we multiply the second times the third and double that. So, th 3 times 5 times 2, and that's equal to 30. And then we take the squares of the uh, second and third term, 
So the second term is 3, so it's 3 squared. And the third term is 5, plus 5 squared. So it's 9 plus 25, and that is equal to 34. And again, we have a Pythagorean triple, 16, 30, and 34, because 16 squared plus 30 squared equals 34 squared. And 256 plus 900 equals 1,156. So these three numbers constitute a uh, Pythagorean triple, just like in the previous example, 3, 4, and 5 are Pythagorean triple. And for number 35, let's do the same thing. So the first step is we multiply the first times the fourth term in the given sequence of four numbers. So that means 5 times 21. 5 times 21 is equal to 105. And then we multiply, we double the second and the third, the products of second and third. So, so B would be 8 times 13 times 2. Or 208. And the last step is we uh, add the squares of the second and the third. So the second term is 8. So 8 squared plus 13 squared is equal to 64 plus 169. So we have the Pythagorean triple, 105, 208, and 233. And so 105 squared plus 208 squared is equal to 233 squared. You know, 111,025 plus 43,269. 264 rather, 264 equals 54,289. 54,289. So that's the connection between uh, the Pythagorean theorem, Pythagorean triples, and Fibonacci, the Fibonacci sequence. The expression 1 plus square root of 5 divided by 2 is known as the golden ratio, and this number is known, has been known for thousands of years, not by the square root symbol, of course, but it's of, symbolized by the letter phi, the Greek letter. And so this golden ratio appears over and over again in art, architecture, music, and nature, and so the Greeks were aware of the ratio and believed the most aesthetically pleasing proportions for a rectangle resulted when dividing the longer side by the shorter, produce, that would produce the uh, golden ratio. So they called such a rectangle the golden rectangle. And so here's how it looks. Here you have a rectangle um, with uh, length L, and, uh, and then you create, construct the uh, smaller rectangle with, with W and length L this way. and so when you compute the ratio of length to width, length to width, then I mean length to width, then you have uh, L plus W, that would be the length divided by L. So you can rewrite the right side. So L divided by W. 
So the, the overall length of this vector is L plus W. That's where the numerator comes from. Divided by the, the width, there would be L. And so then, when you rewrite this as L divided by W equals L divided by L plus W divided by L, then if L divided by W is the ratio, the golden ratio of 1 to phi, uh, L divided by W, then the phi, and then L divided by L is 1, and then W divided by L is the reciprocal of phi, so 1 divided by phi, and then when you clear the fractions by multiplying both sides by phi, we get a quadratic equation, phi squared minus phi minus 1 equals 0, and this one does not have a rational solution, but when we use a quadratic formula, uh, so the quadratic formula, you may remember that uh, when you have a, uh, a uh, quadratic equation of the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, then x is equal to uh, minus b plus or minus the square root of a squared minus 4 ab divided by 2a. So when you use this quadratic formula, you know, the solution x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a, with a equal to 1, b equal to minus 1, and c equal to minus 1, then you get the positive solution, the one with the plus sign, and that's equal to 1 plus the square root of 5 divided by 2. And that is approximately equal to 1.618033, etc. It's an irrational number because of the square root of 5. So, And that is the golden ratio. So uh, here's the interesting connection between Fibonacci numbers and the Gordon Ratio. If we look at the quotients of successive Fibonacci numbers, a pattern emerges. So read down the first column, then to the next column, and so on. So here's the first column. Um, here's a ratio of consecutive or successive Fibonacci numbers. You know, the first to the second, the second to the so on, third, and so on. And look at the ratios. So the, the ratios are getting you know, it goes from 1 to 2 to 1.5, and then next one is 1.666 and 1.6 and 1.625. So it kind of oscillates about a certain value. And as the numbers get that get larger, the ratio kind of converges to a number which is very close to the Gordon ratio. And uh, so you can see when you have 233 divided by 144, it's extremely close to the Gordon ratio. So these, these uh, quotients seem to be approaching some limiting value close to 1.618. In fact, as we go farther into the sequence, these quotients approach the number 1 plus square root of 5 divided by 2, or the Gordon ratio. So that's a connection between the Gordon ratio and the Fibonacci numbers. Then, uh, to find Fibonacci numbers, there's a formula for that. And for example, to find the uh, 13th Fibonacci number, we evaluate 1 plus the square root of 5 divided by 2 to the 13th power minus the negative solution of the quadratic equation, which I showed you a moment ago, 1 minus the square root of 5 divided by 2 to the 13th power divided by the square root of 5. And that is the so-called Binet form of the nth Fibonacci number. And use the Binet form in the calculator to find the nth Fibonacci number um, for each of the following values of n. So then for number 43, with n equal to 16, equal to 16 we compute the 16th Fibonacci number as 1 plus square root of 5 divided by 2 
raised to the 16th power minus 1 minus the square root of 5 divided by 2 to the 16th power all divided by the square root of 5 and when we perform these calculations the answer is 987. Which is quite remarkable when you think about that out of all these irrational numbers with the square root of 5 and so on we get a rational number. To me that's always pretty fascinating. So that's the uh, 16th uh, Fibonacci number. And for n equals 25, it's quite similar. So f sub 25 is equal to, let me put a fraction line here. So it is 1 plus the square root of 5 divided by 2 raised to the 25th power, uh, 25th power minus 1 minus the square root of 5 divided by 2 raised to the 25th power divided by the square root of 5 and that turns out to be 75,025. These calculations are a little bit tedious because you would have to worry about the uh, round of error, so don't round off until later. Carry as many ditches as you can. I hope you have a calculator with a memory, so that makes it a little bit easier. And of course, exponentiation would really be important that you can raise, you know, so that you can raise numbers to the power. So anyway, that concludes section uh, 5.5, .5, and it also concludes chapter 5.